what happened to the democratic promise of 1989, that exhilarating new dawn? That moment when the great civilizations of Central Europe escaped the cold embrace of Soviet communism and came home to the West. On the banks of the Danube, under the bewitching imperial rooftops of Budapest, a new kind of European statehood is being built. It is democratic, but not as we know it. Not remotely as Western Europe had hoped for and expected. There has been, for many years now, an ongoing campaign against independent civil society organizations in Hungary. A populist leader is someone who says, I represent the people. And then you use that mandate to go after the people's enemies. And the people's enemies may be a free press, the people's enemies may be a university, the people's enemies may be the courts. If Hungary had had the, this system that it has now, when it was applying to join the European Union, would it have qualified? No. No, clearly not. Hungary's ruling party have rejected the liberal democratic model that has shaped much of Europe since the Second World War. They see themselves as defending Hungary from being bullied by the big powers of Europe and by Brussels into complying with liberal policies that they see as hostile to Hungarian values. They talk of Hungary as though it's facing a real existential threat and the need to defend the Christian heritage upon which Hungarian identity is based. They want democracy in Hungary, for sure, just not liberal democracy. Instead, they want what the Prime Minister himself calls illiberal democracy. That has divided Hungarian society along lines familiar to Brexit Britain. In the cities, the young, the educated, the professional middle classes accuse the government of a lurch to the authoritarian right, of taming the judiciary, of bringing the media under government control, of clamping down on any form of organised dissent. They see it as a betrayal of the democratic promise Hungary embraced in 1989. In the summer of that year, months before the fall of the Berlin Wall, Hungarians organized what they called a pan-European picnic on the border with Austria. Then, suddenly, unexpectedly, they did something unthinkable for four decades they tore down their section of the Iron Curtain, the first nation to open the gates. The 40-year-old division of Europe was breached. Hungary was open to the West. The emotional impact was huge. You know, it was uh, for us the fence of, of, of our jail. Laszlo Nodz was one of the activists behind the picnic. He joined Viktor Orban in the fight against communism back then and has remained loyal ever since. You must have known that you were risking a jail sentence by doing this. Yes, you know, because uh, when I heard this, on the, I was standing there with my car and uh, I received the information and I was thinking and I knew that there is a law that for uh, being helpful in illegal border crossing, you could get two to five years jail. <laughs> what did that moment mean? Was it about embracing Western-style democracy? Or was it something more visceral, an act of national awakening? Western Europe, through the high life standard, became a postmodern system. Nation is not so important. Identity is not so important. The private freedom is much bigger value than tradition, so on. In our territory, and this is not a Hungarian issue, this is an East, East Central European issue, for us, identity is very important. National our identity. National identity, and our culture is very important, which we want to preserve. El akarják venni az országunkat hogy néhány évtized alatt önként adjuk át másoknak. Más földrészről érkező idegereknek... Orbán's main appeal is not to democracy, but to the idea of the nation. The campaign was dominated by anti-immigrant sentiment, the fear that Hungary is at risk of being overrun. 
Orban asked for and won an overwhelming mandate to preserve Hungary, its heritage and culture for the Hungarians. In Europe, if we speak about uh, Christianity, we speak not only about uh, the church, we speak about the cultural heritage of uh, Europe and we would like to uh, represent uh, these values and uh, remain to this uh, cultural heritage. The campaign turned this man, George Soros, Hungarian-born billionaire and philanthropist, into a national hate figure. For 25 years, Soros has funded organizations that champion liberal democracy. That made him an open critic of Orban's government. The anti-Soros rhetoric was fierce and unrelenting. The implication was unmistakable. Attack Orban and you are attacking Hungary itself. The Fidesz government has promised a series of new measures to crack down on the activity Soros funds, including the Central European University, or CEU, which Soros founded in Budapest in 1991. The simple reason the authorities don't like CEU is not that we're an NGO, it's not that we're the opposition, it's not that we're trying to resist the government, it's simply that we're a free institution that doesn't take orders from the government. And we're one of the very few free institutions in the country. This is a government that has substantial control over the media, substantial control over the, the courts, substantial control over public opinion, substantial control over the economy, and we're not the last person standing, but one of them. And because we're a free institution, um, we're a problem. Everywhere now there is a growing fear that speaking out against the Fidesz government carries a cost. The Hungarian Helsinki Committee is a human rights organization that among other things helps refugees. It's also foreign funded. It has been publicly denounced by the governing party as hostile to Hungary. It knows it too will be targeted by the government's Stop Soros plans. We're described as a an agent of George Soros. We are said to be complicit in global conspiracy uh, where the European institutions, Brussels, Soros, and civil society activists and groups are wanting to drive millions of migrants, Muslim migrants, to Europe and Hungary with the aim of destroying our cultural and religious uh, legacy and identity. The migration will be one of the most important issues uh, in the next decades in Europe and all around the world. And therefore, we, we have to have a policy uh, about the migration. And uh, we can respect the other opinion for other countries because it belongs to the national level in the European Union. But uh, we expect that uh, the other countries have to respect also our democratic decision. It is striking that the most intense anti-migrant sentiment in Europe is in the country that, after the crisis of 2015, has so successfully locked migrants out. Hungary's borders are now so tightly guarded that it's all but impossible to enter the country illegally. Hungary has very few immigrants. It is one of the most ethnically uniform nations in Europe. So how exactly are foreign-funded NGOs helping illegal migration? In Hungary, there are 60,000 NGOs uh, which are operating, existing. And we speak about uh, less than 1% of the NGOs uh, and uh, only 10 or 20 who support not only the migration but also the illegal mig migration. And we would like to stop this activity but we speak only about the illegal migration. But what are NGOs doing to support that illegal migration? There are lots, so uh, I wouldn't like to uh, say name of NGOs because I wouldn't like to accuse uh, one or other NGOs, but uh, you can find a lot of articles in Hungary which uh, uh, describe this uh, situation. But NGOs are still supporting, in your view, illegal migration in Hungary? Yeah, I think so. A few days after this month's election, the fiercely pro-government newspaper Figuelo published a list of names of people said to be working against Hungary for the foreign agent George Soros. Marta Pardavi of the Helsinki Committee found her name among them. The Hungarian government is going after people who have been standing up for 
democracy, for, for, their, for their views, for their right to, to freedom of expression, but also can target anybody else they choose to. And I think it sends a very clear message to a lot of people not to speak up, to become intimidated. You find the same concerns among Hungary's judges. Many are now convinced that the ruling party has created a judiciary that is no longer independent of the government. We spoke to several judges, all expressed concern, but declined to speak publicly. One agreed. There is a general climate of fear that they can do anything to us judges. In certain types of cases, maybe one involving a foreign currency loan, or refugees, or referring to a politician from any of the parties, the judge may think he or she is expected to rule in a certain way because of the general climate, which suggests he should rule in a certain way. This pressure definitely exists. Tunde Hando became head of the National Judiciary Office in 2012. Her husband is a founding member of Fidesz and leads the party in the European Parliament. Her appointment is widely perceived to have politicized a previously independent judiciary. So you're saying that the judiciary in Hungary is now largely controlled by a Fidesz party loyalist? Yes, clearly. And it's very dangerous because uh, all the relevant issues uh, of the uh, administration of the judiciary, for example, appointment of judges, selecting the leaders of the judiciary, uh, the remuneration of judges are uh, decided by this head of the office. Viktor Orban's electoral success creates a new reality. Hungary is pulling away from the founding ideals of the European project, turning its back on traditional liberal democracy and offering Europe something else, his own avowedly illiberal model. My issue with Viktor Orban and CEU's issue with Viktor Orban is not whether he has a mandate, but what democracy is. The question will have to be asked, if you have a European member state that doesn't subscribe to core European values, what do you do? Nobody knows whether Europe will cross that bridge, but if it doesn't, said by somebody who loves Europe, Europe may not survive. I agree 100% with uh, Viktor Orban that uh, the European uh, Union could work much better if uh, strong nations would be the members. If the reform is not coming, I am telling you the European Union will fall apart and that would be a very bad thing because as I said, European Union, the idea was the best political idea in the history of Europe but we are not carrying out this project well. Viktor Orban has won a third consecutive term. His retreat from the open society values on which the European Union has been built is, for his critics, a retreat from democracy itself. That that retreat has been endorsed by the people at the ballot box is the paradox at the heart of European populism. <laughs>